We need to have a days without persona five mention board. I have made that meme. I have made that meme with like Joe Cat just absolutely sitting in a blank room, just days without blank, and it's just like days without Persona 5 being mentioned. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Odd and Colors podcast, the podcast where Marco is still continuously bleeding out. I'm your host, the skeleton with machine gun nipples, Yard Sozosha. Today I'm joined with the crocodile who continuously eats hash browns and mistakes them for eggs, <laughs> Rashi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> and today also with me is the rich girl who continuously puts her money into shit that she shouldn't be doing and instead gets hoodwinked, Smug. I exist. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, today we are here to be talking about Marco in the Galaxy Dragon, which is a game that I have found out about, I want to say since 2019 or 2020, and it is, for lack of a better term, a homeless person's fever dream of a visual novel, and it's absolutely one of the best games I have ever played. It... It is definitely its own. It is it no. It is it is something, all right. <laughs> Four or five years ago, and I still remember some of the insanity vividly. Yeah, I I considered uh, putting on like I, I considered just like having us rewatch some of those highlights and everything, but then I was just like, wait, hold on. It's just like, what what if we just do this by memory? <laughs> Oh, this is this is gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. Out of curiosity, I am probably the only one who has an answer to this question. But out of curiosity, did before I stream about it, did either of you two hear about this game? Uh, no, I have not. Myself personally, no. Hmm. I heard vague things. Vague things. Okay. I your stream yeah first yeah okay so when it came to this game itself I no. I did not necessarily did not uh I, I can hear myself on your mic dude <laughs> yes I did not uh know what I was really getting into I just heard like oh Marco and the Galaxy Dragon and I saw this on Steam and I was just like huh and then. It was just listening to the opening, and it looked and it sounded, like, pretty cool. I, I didn't really even know what I was getting into, but I was not going to outright buy it, because it was a visual novel, and I don't really care too much for that. And then I saw they had a free demo, and I tried it out, just like, all right, look, I'll, I'll just give it a shot. If I don't like it, no harm done. Right. Almost two and a half hours later, I'm like... I gotta get this now, 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 now! <laughs> it's like, it, it sings to me. <laughs> it's, it's this, it just sings to me. And then I was looking like, and, you, and then you came up to me when you, after you, when you started streaming, like, you wanna check this out? Yeah. I think I was at like work when you did the first stream, and I was like, oh, you, that was the harm. <laughs> and then I saw that. Then I saw the first intro. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> as soon as you think you have the story figured out, it will instantly jerk 90 degrees to the right and run at 100 miles per hour. You think you got? You think you got things all figured out? And then wham! Shark ass machine. <laughs> Most things describe themselves as random, and that usually just means meme meme banana, but no, this is the first game I would say is literally so random you can't predict it. No. It is the definition of the purple eyes quote, if it's about bridges, forget it. I dig canals. Deadpool <laughs> <laughs> would look at this and go, hey, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm crazy, but I ain't that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shemotions for Dragon Ball Z and Bridge. Okay, Kinky, we can handle, but we're not being paid for crazy. 
<laughs> I and it's funny you bring up like how fucking weird it is because it's just like I have to say, especially in this day and age, when we're surrounded by nothing but brain rot content, this is absolutely my kind of brain rot. Honestly, it's so funny because we could describe any scene from this visual novel and it sounds like we're absolutely mental. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you remember that time a little girl finished her piano recital and got robbed by clowns? <laughs> hey, remember the time that a lady was fighting zombies and then just OD'd off drugs? Remember that time of remember that time a uh, short stack and a fucking dark-skinned alien from another planet and whatnot decided to have a fight and it led to them just disembodying their heads and fighting regardless with lasers and everything. Which, fun fact, yeah, none of what we are saying is in any way, shape, or form completely, like, it, it, it's not even, like, remotely made up. All this shit happened. Do you remember that time a doctor started having a weird orgasm mid-surgery? Hmm. I couldn't make the shit- I couldn't make the shit up if I'm trying- I am sad that I lack the talent to make this shit up! <laughs> you know, it's- you know it's saying something when the literal child mayor is the sanest thing. <laughs> it is saying something that a person with a calendar for a head is the least weird thing you are coming across in this. It is saying something when a Fucking Vespa that can turn into a robot is the least weirdest thing you are coming across. Um, no, nah, I don't know now. That can that uh, calendar uh, virus thing was uh, pretty fucking weird. Oh yeah, the virus thing was pretty weird. But there is just or later on, there is just a calendar just chilling in a room, drinking tea and watching TV. It is never questioned. It is never brought up again, but it happens. <laughs> There's so many things in the story that they just don't explain at all. And it just exists. And you have to accept it. Cat mech. <laughs> yeah. Cat and a Metal Gear. A fucking... <laughs> a fucking intergalactic uh, deal, deal broker. Just as a mouse in a fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> and they just now what makes it even funnier is that is that mark is that the, the, the main character just just accept it <laughs> is, and that's just what's making it that's just what makes it better <laughs> yeah there is an alligator that buys slaves and he's not the bad guy by all accounts he's just kind of a thug that's it that is the only one taking things seriously is the literal overlord. One of the antagonists is a little girl who wants to be bullied. Look, we look, we all have our kinks here. Don't judge, okay? <laughs> oh my god. Like, it is just... And that's not even half of what this game has to offer, is the thing. Ho pump the brakes Arashi. <laughs> you know, what the friends of Rachi? <laughs> <laughs> I will not be silenced. Anyway. <laughs> it's... I think it's interesting because, like... I don't know, I think this might have been the... Third or fourth I've seen, but this, uh... This brings up an interesting discussion, I think, for me personally, is that it... Regarding the acquired taste of visual novels. Okay. And that is, is that the problem with a lot of the visual novels I've seen is that they are relatively uninteresting in a lot of ways in that where it very much is just sort of, it, it, it's mainly just like art with images and slideshows and all of that. But it's also, it's just like, for the most part, I think when it comes to visual novels, what is the biggest uh, genre, what are the big kind of, biggest kind of games we think of when we think of, like, visual novels? Well, the one that... Uh, well, the biggest one that comes off my... comes at the top of my head, actually, two, would be, uh, one, the Fate series. Mm -hmm. 
and for Smug, it'd be Umi Neko. Yeah, I personally, for me, I think it more goes to stuff like that, but also more so it's essentially like, yeah, serious stories or in some cases, uh, stories around high school romance or like visual novels fall into three categories porn good stories or good stories that happen to have porn i don't know what you're talking about for that third one and then this is the uh how do i say fuck i don't have another term for this this is the marco and the galaxy dragon category Ah, yes, the fourth, rare fourth category of random bullshit. Go. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Why do I want more? <laughs> yeah, because I think, aside from, like, the, the bigger name titles out there, like Clenad, like Fate, like, even uh, Majikoi, like, one of the biggest visual novels that has gotten attention in the last, what, five, ten years or so, by ha all hands down, Doki Doki Literature Club. Yeah, that's a, that sounds about right. Yeah. It was, by all accounts, like, everybody, when they were going into it, thought we were just getting a slice-of-life high school ro romance comedy and stuff thing. But then the rug got pulled under our uh, our feet and then we saw logan paul in a high schooler's fucking room with a camcorder <laughs> you're not wrong but damn <laughs> yeah and the fact that it just got more and more depressing and worse from there it's just like yeah and then outside of that another visual novel i can think of top of my head slay the princess yeah which I honestly think is one of those visual novels that I think a lot more people could flock to due to it being a choose your adventure choose your own adventure kind of game and the layers of detail it has within and slay the princess is such a good romance story too yeah yep. also helps when you have I know it's like you, you have what like, you have the one guy doing practically the entire cast but and that just helps add to the comedy. Yeah, it's like, it's just two actors going all in in the booth. That's it. It, just, it really goes to show like just the range and the performances they bring next to just how just fully like layered this game is. But that also in my terms, I think choose your own adventure is sort of in a number of ways an exception to visual novels because much like with marco and the galaxy dragon there is a big overarching shadow and that is the downside of visual novels and that is basically essentially what telltale games went bankrupt for and that is people would very much be more comfortable with watching it as opposed to buying it and playing it also slay the princess is getting a free expansion slight plug yeah, it is. And I can't wait to check that out, and I'll have to make a podcast episode talking about that soon. Wait, I am going going on to that uh, point about rather watching it instead of playing it. Yeah, I can... That is a fair, fair argument there, especially given how... Well, it's funny, you, you brought that up, and considering Fate does do stuff like that, where, oh, you don't want to play it, it's going to be confusing, but you can watch something like that. Yeah. And it just... Ooh. But, yeah, I see what you're, ta what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's... I mean, it, it, it brings up an interesting question in terms of, like... Oh, God. I'm waiting. <laughs> and tell tell games dug their own grave too, because the choices never mattered because they had a main plot line to follow and had to force you to. Get, get. I I would okay I 
ultimately wouldn't say that because yes, the choices in some cases actually do did matter, especially when it came to The Walking Dead. Like a lot of choices genuinely did matter and they did change up the progression of the story and how your experience was. The biggest problem was not whether or not the choices matter and everything. The biggest problem was that a lot more people, from what I could tell, essentially were more fine with watching streamers play it and agreeing with their choices as opposed to going out and buying the game. And that is what I think shot them in the foot, is that ultimately at the end of the day, like because nobody outside of certain streamers and content creators were buying it, it, it would just, while, you know, admittingly, yeah, at first, people were more than willing to go out of their way to buy stuff like Telltale is the Walking Dead, uh, The Wolf Among Us, even the Game of Thrones and Batman Telltale games they did. Yes. In, in season one and two, sure, and three onwards? No, disagree. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I do think that there is uh, room there to definitely debate on that because it's I, I do think that very much there are some games and especially like I think one of their divisive games that they've made is and an example of I think why sort of they started to decline in terms of sales is Tales from the Borderlands because it was targeting two different audiences it was targeting people who were going for the point and click type of quick time event Telltale games that they were wanting but also it was targeting people who were coming from Borderlands. It was sort of the Persona 4 arena situation where you were targeting two different demographics and it was for a specific niche. Right. And... All tales from the Borderlands also had to fit into the canon of the mainline games. That's what crippled it. Yeah, it, it did the, from my own perspective, the Kingdom Hearts situation where, oh, you don't understand this? Well, you should play this instead. Yeah, that would turn a lot of people away from it real quick. I mean, the difference between like Kingdom Hearts though and Tales from the Borderlands is that Kingdom Hearts is an action RPG. So there is that gameplay element that definitely I think kept it afloat for so many years next to the fan service. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Marco the Galaxy Dragon, I feel is definitely one of those games where it's just like out of the gate and throughout the story, you look at it and it's just like, it's so chaotic, so unordinary, so unorthodox, so just what the fuck is happening that you look at it and it's just like, all right, I can't watch this anymore. I have to go and buy it. And I feel like to me, especially with the animation put on a lot of these cutscenes, the different character designs, the music, the art, like, all of this wrapped in an entire visual novel is just one of those cases where I feel it actually does have some legs to stand on in terms of just how fucking insane and good it is. Have these devs ever made anything else, by the way? Or was this their first and only game? Actually, that's a good question. I will look that up right now. I will look that up. Tokyo Tune. Here we go. Oh wait, this is a fucking porn webtoon site. Here we go. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily a good sign. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, from the looks of things, they actually have some other games. Good Lawyer, Bad Neighbor, Marco and the Galaxy Dragon. You're gonna find some very different Marco and the Galaxy Dragon art on that site. 
<laughs> yeah, so they do have other games that under their belts. But definitely, I feel like Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, by all accounts, and it's obvious to see why, is that this is their standout game that they've made. Oh, yeah, it, definitely. It certainly shows. Yeah. I. It does. And considering we were talking, I brought up like the art and the animation and everything, this does bring up an interesting conversation, which more and more I really feel like people are leaning to the. Uh, to the latter of this, and that is the cinematic phase versus the pursuit of art direction in video games. Okay. And it has been parroted by not just, you know, other people who play video games, but people like Maximilian Dude, people like Yong Ye, a lot of different people in the video game community who have ultimately said that, yeah, graphics have kind of reached their peak for a long while now. And essentially, like, we're well past the point where photorealism is a reason to buy a console or sell a game. Now, people aren't paying 60 to 70 bucks any more as much for the next Final Fantasy. Now people aren't paying as much for the next God of War, or the 500th re remaster of The Last of Us, so on and so forth. Whatever shit P Sony PlayStation is coming out with. Now people are going for games like Guilty Gear Strive, games like Hi-Fi Rush, games like Amori, like games like hell, games like this, where the art direction is definitely more prominent, and while graphically, they're not really pushing the benchmarks on machines or anything. People will still love and enjoy these games regardless. I like cinematic games sometimes, but when that's all the industry wants to do, they all feel the same. Yes. It's exactly. Yeah, it's... Because here's the thing, about, uh, like... Criticism aside, I think The Last of Us, when it came out, was a genuinely fun game for a playthrough. Like, it was fun with the kind of resource management, exploring the different worlds, seeing these beautiful post-apocalyptic sites. It had its vision, and I think it really nailed it. It's just now we are going more and more towards the, uh, towards the time where essentially I think video game executives want to push for more photorealism means everything. This is why we're seeing a massive inflation. Not just, I mean, there is price, yeah, but a massive inflation in storage. Because now you have games that are in just about almost any genre where they will be fucking pushing 100 gigs and they're not even worth it. Like fucking Tekken 8 is almost like 80 gigs. That sound. That is. That's right. It's. And... Oh, that was the thing about Uncharted series, also especially too. Back then, it was this amazing new thing, and because it sold so well, they thought this was the only way to make money. Yeah. But it wasn't. It. It wasn't. I feel definitely. You know, from an outsider point of view, God of War, uh, 2018 was definitely a prime. Uh, Example of sort of eating your cake and having it too, where you can have beautiful photorealistic visuals, but have some really damn good gameplay. Oh yeah, and uh, to go on, and it's the way people, the way you think about it, and the more, the more, the better the gameplay, the more people will be drawn to it, despite art style and graphics. Yeah. Hades is another prime example of that. Absolutely. It, it's very much a prime example of that because the game top down, I will 100% say, is more reminiscent to a game like Diablo as opposed to, say, a, like, I guess a game like Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate in, in a lot of ways, where it very much is going for minimalism with the graphic fidelity, but the animations, the music, the the essentially like coded in adapting 
the music, the combat, the different enemies you come across, the different weapons you acquire, the different skills, abilities, and whatnot, so on and so forth. Like, the pros and cons and whatnot of the roguelike system and everything, I feel, has made it a hallmark in genuinely really good indie games with beautiful art direction. And then there's games where... Essentially, it's, it's more so goes down a similar vibe of what uh, games such as what Naughty Dog is releasing now, where they want to be cinematic, but the games look more fictional, look cartoonish, look fake, and that is games produced by stuff like That Game Company, stuff like Journey, stuff like Flowers, stuff like Sky, Children of the Light. Those games all have this very... Uh, I will even say, I'll, I'll say very, like, cartoonish-esque type visuals to them. And yet they're some of the most beautiful games anybody can play. You see, the interesting thing about that is that the Norse God of War games should have been three titles because by the end of Ragnarok, it feels like everything is just being rushed to finish. Mm-hmm. Right, yep. Yeah. They do kind of try to even things out with uh, the Valhalla DLC, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... I, and regarding the whole, like, cinematic phase and the amount of people who have been in defense of this, I, I have said this already, but I'm going to say it for public for the people to hear, and that is I genuinely 100% believe, without a shadow of a doubt, the people who are showing for this, people who are going out of their way to go, now, like, graphic fidelity is very important in our video games. We need to have these visuals. We need to have these high-res visuals. We need to have photorealism. We need to have 120 frames per second, so on and so forth. The reason why I think a number of people are showing for them is not because they intend to buy the games. And it's not even because they intend to ever play them. I think it is 100% because these people will want to watch these games as movies. That's why I think ultimately a lot of these games that are photorealistic are, you, there is so much of an audience that's pushing for it. It's because, because you can, it's not that hard to, it's not that hard to like find this out. And it's not, and it's not like I'm talking on my ass here because look up The Last of Us, look up Uncharted, look up like all these different games with high res photorealistic graphic fidelity visuals and then look them up on youtube see how many views videos that are full movie or all cutscenes get and i assure you a vast majority of those views are not going to people are not coming from people who have played the game as much as they are coming from people who would very much rather watch the game And I think, yeah. Oh, I, no, go ahead. No, I was saying, yeah, I can see that. I was thinking about it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep going. Yeah, and I and here's the thing too. It might sound like I'm just calling some people out, and I I, I I'm not saying that. I am, but I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but I here's the thing too, and I think it is coming. F it is like an issue that has to be tackled with some nuance. Because it would be easy for me to say, yeah, uh, anybody who shills for the cinematic games, you just don't even bother playing these video games. It would be so easy to say shit like that. But I know, but I the answer is right in front of us. The games are 70 bucks and pushing over 100 bucks at times. These games are fucking expensive. It's understandable. But another God of War sequel would have been another massive amount of money to fund, which means another four to five years of money spent on high fidelity visuals, environments, and so on, in addition to needing enough content to justify itself. As at some point, it becomes a losing battle. Yeah. The, what is referred to, and thanks to Red Dead Redemption 2, I believe it's called 40K Horseballs. <laughs> Because apparently that game was so dedicated to graphic fidelity because I think maybe because of the executives and whatnot that they have mentioned, yeah, you can actually see horse testicles freezing in the winter. It's like, is that really necessary? Is that really fucking necessary? Is, is that 
that I don't think that's really important. Nonsense! Yeah. <laughs> but, again, it's like I was saying, is that, yeah, games are absolutely fucking incredibly expensive. And this is also something that has absolutely been uh, broken down. Like, there is a wonderful video breaking down the essential, the, uh, the subject of inflation regarding media and how certain people will just push off the games being 70 bucks and plus for certain one reason after another and how a lot of these reasons if you break it down and look at like the history look at the facts they really fall apart and essentially like back to that whole thing of like people watching a lot of these cinematic uh games is that i do think that there are a decent amount of people that maybe not necessarily watch the entire game, but more so go, okay, is this game worth it? And I don't want to pay this much money for this brand new game and realize that I fucking hate it. I want to see it, like, without any commentary. I want to see it without using any content creator. I want to see it just, like, as a movie on YouTube and then judge it from that. And... Generally, yeah, I think um, there's a good chunk of people like who ch take a look at those videos and go, okay, so this is what there is to show. Like, and probably some people who are who are already well tired of the whole cinematic phase going, uh, yeah, okay, okay, look, it looks real. Yeah, I can see every pore on Abby's face when she's getting raw dog. I don't care. Can what is the gameplay look like? Oh, the gameplay is sort of like this third person beat em up and there's different like combos I can pull. There's different weapons I can use. Okay, I, I kind of like this. I You know what? I'm interested in buying it. But that does not stop, particularly the Twitter gamers from engaging in rage baiting for the sake of views, for the sake of attention, just because Hey, look at me, guys. I have Last of Us 2. It has, like, 60 plus frames, and you can see every pore on fucking Joe's face and everything, and, and, and Ellie's face, and then he also has, like, realistic visuals and everything, and it's so awesome and cute. He, like, turns off Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's... Like, but, yeah. That's the thing nobody talks about. The Last of Us 2 has amazing gameplay, but when it lets you play it, yeah. 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 Uh, honestly, that the idea of just watching it to see if you would be interested in it, honestly, I think more people should just do as a whole. Because, like you, like when you did for uh for uh, Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, it made me oh it made me want to grab it. I te technically didn't because I lost my job at the time. Ah. But that's the kind of power. That's the kind yeah. of. Yeah. But that's the type of power this has. But yeah, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah, I, I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. Wait, Privileged bias aside. Yes. <laughs> also, side note. I think one of the most flawed arguments will always be well games were $90 back in the early 2000s, so you should be happy they're 70 now not realizing inflation exists or the change of currency. Yeah, games were not, and I, I speak this from somebody who grew up in the 2000s, games were not 90 bucks, they were 60. And a lot of the games, this was well before DLC was a major thing, so a lot of the games that came in packages top top price it went from 50 bucks to 60 bucks essentially for video games they were absolutely cheaper that's not even a contest i was and pr source of proof i was fucking there in the stores buying games yep yeah. and then I that's really yeah i remember i remember those days i remember those days before uh that became a big no-no also without game updates though you were screwed if it didn't work yeah i think isn't that what also happened to stuff like uh kingdom hearts where it's just like it had a lot of issues starting out and then they came up with like final mix 
which had a lot of patches and whatnot to the game. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and it was it wasn't until uh, unfortunately Final Mix at the time was uh, Japan only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, essentially with new content. Yeah, I it's I don't know. It's just like I mean, we also have to take into account that the gaming scene from the 2000s was vastly different compared to what it is now because now like so many so many companies in the industry are pushing for digital uh releases instead of physical releases like because we here's the thing we're not we are never going to be able to get another dance dance revolution nowadays because instead i mean we might we might but instead it would just It'd be something you would have to buy a console for, buy a console-specific webcam for, and then move around just on the space, because that's what it got replaced with. Dance games, like Dance Dance Revolution and Pump It Up, got replaced more so on home releases with stuff like Just Dance. Yep. Yeah. It's and. and then they're gaming didn't start becoming mainstream ironically until uncharted 2 when that game showed that games could be more than just games but these big budget cinematic experiences <laughs> yeah i think a good way i think i could describe it is like uncharted to video games in the mainstream is like scary movie to the satire movie in that Scary Movie is a really funny movie. It is absolutely a funny movie, and it's genuinely some of the best, like, satire I've seen. But that in and of itself led to some of the worst schlock we have gotten for parody movies and satire movies, which has, which has collectively been referred to as the movie movie and has gotten so much rightfully justified shit for it yeah i i still remember superhero movie mm -hmm. ah disaster movie fuck that shit it's just <sighs> but yeah that is that is my point definitely where it's like uncharted definitely playing it not even having any uh like not having any really expectations going into it. Uncharted 1 playing and going and finding, like, uh, the treasure of El Dorado and everything. Oh, this was fun. Like, it was just like, oh, man, this is kind of like Tomb Raider, but in, on PS3. And I was really interested. I liked the puzzles. I liked, like, how it utilized different shootouts and whatnot. I liked the story and the characters. I thought this was a really good game. And then Uncharted 2 came by, and I was just like, honestly, this is honestly kind of better. I like the characters, I like the story, and I really like, I, I, I love the visuals of Shambhala in Uncharted 2 so much. And that final boss fight is just, yeah, I love it. But, yeah, it is sort of the, uh, it is sort of the Final Fantasy 7 treatment again, where a lot of people like it. And now, essentially, a lot of games and a lot of media are going to be compared or have to fall in that footstep, in the footsteps of that. Well, it's like the issue with many gaming trends, like a hero shooter comes out does well now. Everyone wants to do a hero shooter. Survival crafting, battle royale, so on. Yeah, and now one of the, I think one of the bigger uh i i can't believe i'm coming back to this shit again i want to be done with it but i think one of the bigger things that is absolutely uh getting its own trend has been jrpgs due to of course persona 5 i yeah <laughs> it's one day you'll be done with it one i day. really hope one of these days i can be done with it because i mean like it's just it's it did significantly well for itself and it had so many collaborations so many ties and everything that now 
like a lot of games in the JRPG scene are being compared to it. All, some games in JRPG scene are taking inspiration from it, so on and so forth. And it's like, you know, I get it. It's game itself is not bad or anything. It's not really that bad. It's not even like one of the worst games I've played or anything. But ultimately, it is just a case of like, there is other avenues to like, Look, there's other avenues to go down. This is why I personally think games like Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, I think personally, are really good regarding that because it really didn't feel like it was trying to be like insert blank here or this other game. It really felt like it was trying to be its own thing while having so much fun doing its own thing. And boy, did it deliver on that. <laughs> Like, we need to have a Days Without Persona 5 mention board. I have made that meme. I have made that meme with, like, Joe Cat just absolutely sitting in a blank room, just Days Without Blank, and it's just, like, Days Without Persona 5 being mentioned. <laughs> oh, man. But back on topic, because we're getting off topic. Uh, yeah, Mar Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, I think, is, like, really interesting regarding its art direction because, yeah, on the surface, it can look just like this atypical anime-esque visual novel. But you look at, like, the character portraits, you look at the visuals for some of these jokes and the comedy and the animations, it's just, like, this is straight up, like, absolutely, this would absolutely have life as an anime. This would absolutely have life on some other kind of like, I think, video game genre or video game medium, other than v just being a visual novel. Like, if this were to absolutely get an anime, and this was say, let's say, I don't know, this anime was done by Science Saru. Like the people who did Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. The people who did Keep Your Hands Off Azekin. If this was done by that studio, or even Studio Color Rodeo, the studio that did um, Burn the Witch. If we were to get an adaptation on that level done right, I really think this could absolutely be one of the biggest franchises to hit. Yeah, I can, I can see that. It's, yeah, it's like, like we made the comparison. I think I made that comparison when I joined stream how about you could i could see this being like a saturday morning cartoon type thing mm -hmm. yeah it very much has that uh it, it very much has that uh free sort of animation and comedy vibes that a lot of stuff like tom and jerry and looney tunes and even some disney stuff i think came and did and that is it, it's like it's because you have stuff like Essentially, Marco riding on a, a hoverboard, and they have that whole thing with a split screen where they're shooting at her, and it just shows her perspective. And immediately, as soon as she gets close, just jumps right over the fucking split screen. Like, there is plenty here where it's just like, if you were to handle this as an adaptation, do it right, like, this would absolutely have life. Can I just say I love Marco's design? and that the game doesn't feel the need to, and this is going to be a huge hot take. It doesn't feel like, oh, she's an adult woman, gotta give her tits. Yeah, it, yeah, that, I, I don't even think she's like, I, I, honestly, I don't think most of these characters, I could be wrong in this, I don't think most of these characters are supposed to be like adults though. Cause I don't think like, Marco, I think might have been, I don't remember how old Marco was, but, I think, um, I think what essentially, like, what I would say about the character designs is that it doesn't feel like it has to do sort of the, how do you put it, cool Kyoshinja-esque kind of designs where if the character is a kid, we have to absolutely make them look like a kid. If the character is... An adult woman, we have to give uh, her giant tits on some level. Like, a lot of these characters have sex appeal, but it never really feels like it's constantly forced in your face. 
it doesn't feel like they have to address their characters' ages because it's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah like, none of these characters fuck. None of these characters fuck. Like, there is an entire scene where they are on the beach in swimsuits. There, there, there's an entire scene where they're on the beach in swimsuits. Fucking, one of the characters is just has a bikini in Daisy Dukes. It's just, it's just there because, oh, we're going to the beach. That's it. Marco's mom does, though. E <laughs> Wait, not on screen, though. <laughs> but you know what happens. Also, she survived how? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's I feel like that's the thought process going don't through this entire it. game. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> Your brain will explode if you think about it. The family trait is just undying like with Marco bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't know, this game is definitely interesting, and if you're hearing noise, it is mainly because my neighbor is vacuuming right now. That's fine. Alright. But yeah, uh, here, let me get, let me see if I can't put a noise gate on that. All right, that should be better. Right. Anyway, yeah, um, what was I saying? Right, right, right. Uh, so when it comes to like the character design, I think it is definitely like, it is interesting, uh, sort of the creativity while in some ways I would say limitations that they have regarding this because they wanted to make sort of like a high school comedy sort of chaotic brain rot story sure but they don't really like here's the thing it's like a lot of these uh designs a lot of these co a lot of these outfits the characters are wearing don't feel unconventional they feel very much like if you were playing a normal visual novel they would not stick out too much a lot of these character designs feel much like it works with that and then it also, in some cases, subverts expectation in, in a number of ways with just its comedy, its timing, its usage of uh, sometimes physical gags and whatnot. There is like, I mean, you have a character like, like one of Marco's uh, siblings who looks like a girl, who looks like a like sort of uh, I wasn't where I'm looking for, uh, like a jock girl, essentially. She's wearing, like, this giant jersey and everything. Like, where's Black? You have her, and you have a scene of her just shooting zombies and just roiding out. <laughs> and it's just, like, it, it feels like, you know, it, it feels sort of subverting the expectation regarding the character designs, and I like that. Is like that. Marco is, that is also a Super Saiyan Dragoon. But now, whether I am making that up or that actually happens, play the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 that breath of fresh fresh air you expect after uh, so much. Yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, like the fucking <laughs> the, the, the fucking skeleton has bomb tits. Whether or not I am making that up, play the game. Don't worry about it. Just play the game. Yeah. Just play the game in general. And then I think, uh... Oh man. I know we haven't really talked too much about the story, but... Where do you start that doesn't make me sound like I should be put in an insane asylum? Um... Yes. Exactly. <laughs> The thing is, if we talk about the story, it ruins it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. I will say, though, that this game does, for the most part, have a genuine understanding of how to utilize drama, 
com and drama and comedy really well because that's something that I think is a problem even in a lot of media today where they will want to be dramatic but they'll also want to throw in comedy like this is a problem I have with like Marvel movies nowadays where they want to be taken seriously they want to be dramatic but they also want to put in these like quips and these one-liners and these jokes in moments that don't really call for it This is why uh, the Deadpool series is beloved because, sure, there are quips and not, but that is the whole point of the character. Yeah, and it knows to be serious when it has to be serious. Yeah, like it's 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 like going into the Deadpool game and getting mad at Deadpool for essentially getting bored at exposition and dialogue and just shooting himself. <laughs> Like, so basic. It's so boring. Dead. Make it stop. Darn it! Wait. <laughs> Marco and the Galaxy Dragon also has an incredible lesson about family, adoptive family, and love. Yeah, the incredible lesson. Remember, if your slaver is an alligator, you too can have a place. You too can have a happy family. I don't know what I said. <laughs> the dragon, you lunatic. <laughs> All right, the other message. Remember, kids, if you have a serious injury, just bleed out and you'll get a cool dragon arm. While you're at it, stare directly at the sun. You might get superpowers. Now, you know somebody's going to actually do that. Look, if they were actually going to do that, they were not long for this world to begin with. This is just natural selection. I want to see where this goes. <laughs> this is nice popcorn. Remember, kids, Remember. if you find a dragon mom, become a lesbian. Yeah, but, Ronnie, I think... I mean, in order to the like, silence got me fucked up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we should sort of like close on this with more. So, uh, honestly, the question of whether or not this is going to get a sequel or other projects. Um, I now call me crazy. I don't think this will get a sequel. Mm -hmm. It looks very finalized. If it makes sense. Mm hmm. I... The way everything is kind of they did leave the door open for a sequel, though. The okay, yeah, they... yeah. The problem with uh, it being a sequel in my eyes is very much the Hangover Two symptom, and that is we repeat the same shit over and over again. And granted, don't get me wrong, if we're getting more of this kind of comedy, by all means, but. Do we really just want to get Marco and the Galaxy Dragon 2 to play Marco and the Galaxy Dragon 1? Do you really want to get Overwatch 2 just to play Overwatch 1.5? No, no, you don't. Yeah, you don't. You, you get a sequel to get a sequel. Yeah, this is why, like, again, back on Persona. Yeah. Like, Persona 5 Strikers. This is why I have said it worked as a sequel, because it didn't just do the same thing over and over again. It continued the story, and took it in a different direction than it initially was. A direction which I think actually was a lot more nuanced and a lot more interesting compared to what it was initially doing. But that's okay, again, because it's a sequel. It's a continuation, and it's taking this subject that can go in a lot of different routes and doing a few, and going some extra routes instead of just acting like that was the only way to go about it. It feels like if you have a sequel, they'll start explaining more stuff about the world, and that ruins it. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like, regarding other projects, I kind of feel like this would be good as sort of though, it's sort of the like, and essentially in like, regarding Japan, a four coma series where it is just a bunch of dumb shorts, dumb comical shorts, and that's it. I feel like, 
if the, if the sequel went down that sort of route, whether it be in a manga or whether it be in an anime, that would actually hold some water. Oh yeah, I I, I definitely get a kick out of that. Yeah, I do think that although like regarding uh, sort of other projects, I think having this as a fighting game would probably hold some water because a lot of these characters are in combat scenes. You can actually do work with this in a fighting game, like whether or not uh, we're getting French bread, whether or not we get Arxis, whether or not we get Exceed, like there is like there is room here for a actual fighting game for these characters in this roster. And hell, if they were to come out with a sequel, they would just open the doors up for more characters to come in. Oh, I, oh it, I can only imagine what they'd do with it if they get somebody to do with it. Yeah. But it also has to be done right in my eyes because... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't... That's, you, that's the point. you don't want to troll to it. Mm, well, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's extreme, Thank but you it's just like bringing... you don't want to. You don't want to fuck this up. You like I know it's extreme, exactly. but you don't want to fuck this up. Like seriously. Hey, I will spoil one thing. Did you guys notice that we never meet the mayor at all? They never have relevance other than she exists too. No, we meet the mayor. <laughs> yeah, there was one point. We we, we meet the mayor. You blocked it out because the game is so fucking insane. <laughs> and that's a valid reason to block this shit out. <laughs> and now who's telling the truth, chat? You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Vote now on your phones. <laughs> For all you know, we could just be gaslighting you this whole time. <laughs> By the way, at the end of the game, Marco uh, essentially kills kills the heroes and becomes the major villain. Anyway, we're gonna do that's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> what a note to end it on, all right. <laughs> Yeah, imagine if this is yeah. the most boring visual novel ever and we're just gaslighting everyone. Well <laughs> we're just pulling this shit out of our ass at this point. This whole time. <laughs> you click on Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, it just opens up to the room, and it's nothing but that. <laughs> but no, we do highly recommend Marco and the Galaxy Dragon. Absolutely. And if anybody is interested in getting the game, let me look this up here. It's on Switch. Yeah, it is on Switch. Uh, fuck this. God, fuck my fucking phone. <laughs> okay. Uh, is this here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is on Switch and it is on Windows. That's it. Okay, just had to make sure. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to get Marco and the Galaxy Dragon today, it's available on Switch, it is available on Steam. Uh, I think the Steam version is about like, what, 20? Yep, it's about 20 bucks. So yeah, it is a over three times cheaper than most AAA games you're going to get today. And it's a hell of a story to jump into and everything. And it's, an, it's a completely unforgettable experience of a visual novel you will come across in a long time. And I 100% recommend it. But yeah, uh, out of curiosity, do you guys have anything you want to plug? Nope. There's a part in the game where everyone gets weirdly obsessive and tries to body snatch each other, which is made up by parasitic love bugs that take the form of random people. 
again. Are Am I lying? lying? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't have any ring of blood. All right. Yeah, so... I would ultimately say, yeah, uh... I do. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Give it a minute. Pray for me. I have to write a Dragon Age Vilgard review. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh. You, you, pull, pull hive. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, yeah, I have. Uh, feel free to check me out uh, on twitch.tv slash cafe autumn. I have Kara. I've got a portfolio set up on ArtStation and check me out on YouTube and everything. And yep. Uh, that's going to do it. So uh, we're going to take off. And this has been the Odd Colors podcast. And I'll see you all next time. Next time. So take care and peace.